Welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to start playing in the 5 plus 3 pool um, because I've played so many Blitz games and learned really not a whole lot from playing so many Blitz games that I thought perhaps it's time that I actually slow things down and try to think before I move. Yes, you heard it here for you heard it here first, folks. Um, I'm actually going to attempt to think. Now, I'm trying to recall what my friends have shown me about this particular King's Gambit Accepted. I don't recall if I lead with d6 or h6 here. I And I know it's important, and I don't recall why. Um... I think I lead with d6 and then follow with h6. And I think that this is just a free pawn. Um, perhaps I need to interject knight f6. Like I said, again, I'm my opponent is moving quickly. I am rushing my moves, and that is not a good thing. Because here I have now dropped my f-pawn. Um... So, they say experience is the best teacher, and today we are getting experience. Good gravy we're getting experience. We're going to learn this the hard way so hard that maybe next time I will actually remember this experience and remember to play h6 before knight f6. I think that's the hope. Or maybe it's h6 before d6. There's some move ordering thing here. People have shown me it a dozen times. I've completely forgotten. So, um, we'll see if we can learn this the hard way, because apparently learning the easy way is not my specialty. <laughs> but yeah, the folks in this 5-3 pool actually reminds me of the competition I have on other sites. Like, you actually get some strong opponents who think considerably about their moves before making them. And this is something that I'm not really finding so much in the 3-0 or 3-2 pools. Um, and as much as you like to think that you can improve the game just by having excellent intuition, that's just not realistic. And it takes serious effort to improve at this game. Um... So I think I've escaped the opening alive. I think I'm going to be playing bishop e7, and if necessary, knight c6 to defend the bishop. Um, that's the plan at present. So we'll see if um, I can get all my pieces developed. Uh, note that uh, there was, well, there was this little hash mark in the corner indicating that the board could be resized. I have now pulled it and the hash mark's gone away, um, as it should because we're no longer in the start position, so you can't accidentally resize the board during the game. Um, so that's that. So I'm debating, do I take the knight? Do I play c6 to try to hold on to the center? Or do I uh, advance my knight to this beautiful... I would call it an outpost, but it's not staying there very long. Or do I maybe develop another piece? Developing a piece actually looks like the safest course and best course of action. Although taking c3 is probably good too. Um, I just don't like giving away uh, the d4 square. And knight e3 just undermines this pawn. Um, granted, the pawn's doomed anyway, but uh, we might as well get something in the form of pawn structure or some other activity or compensation. Well, thank you. Um, thanks for the feedback. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help you out. So, what can I do here? 
I think my opponent's still planning on capturing d5, and then at some point e7. Um, so I think I still do need to uh, add more defense to my pieces here. Um, if I do bishop c5, check, d4, takes, t oh wait, I'm inverting my move order. Let me look at this again. Bishop c5, d4. I was thinking like I might have some shot with bishop takes, knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes, but then this d4 is defended by the pawn. So there's no shot where I can just suddenly win a pawn. So I do need to reinforce my pieces rather than embarking on an attack. Um, all right, so we'll reinforce d5. That'll do. It's possible maybe my microphone's misbehaving or maybe it's just my voice. I can't really say. Um, yeah, I think I need to defend this way so I could play knight c6. Let's see. No, no, no. It's kind of in jest that today I've played like four or five games of five plus three, and I think I've lost four of them. And it's not that I'm trying to lose, I'm certainly making an effort to win. It's just this is an entirely new ball game here. Um, yeah, let's get my king out of here. So that's kind of a joke. Uh, I'm not really attempting to lose my rating points. It's just that this uh, 5 plus 3 just gives me a challenge I haven't seen in a very long time. And it's going to take me some time to adapt to this. So... If I happen to lose a couple points along the way, that's just how the cookie crumbles. Um, yeah, 5 plus 3 is super challenging. I know there's some streamers who will play, like, much slower time controls. Um, I don't understand how they manage to do that either. I don't know. And to be fair, like when I started the stream, I was actually kind of annoyed with how my voice is coming out anyway. Maybe I am coming down with a cold or something. It could be. Um, oh. So do I do this to hit the bishop? I wonder. Oh, I'm in time trouble. Great. That's fantastic. Um... Hmm. That'll work. Oh, alright. Good to know at least the hardware is performing the same as usual. There is a saying that nobody likes hearing the sound of their own voice, but I was particularly self-conscious about mine. So it's good for me to hear that I wasn't self-conscious for no reason, that it actually is pretty terrible. Um... So at least I can understand how other people feel about it. Damn, I'm losing a pawn. This is not good. This is not good. Let's pretend that everything will be okay. And maybe he won't notice this. Oh, I am pinned. That's no good. Well, crap. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, me, oh, my. Maybe he still won't notice this. He noticed. Yep, the jig is up. All right. Well, we tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, it didn't really matter. We had to fall 
to lose it all. But in the end, it didn't really matter. All right, whatever. We're down two minutes and not saving that position. So, uh, what did I mess up again? I think it was the Fisher defense. I think this is okay, but I think after bishop c4, I have to go h6 before knight f6. And that way, when they do play d3 or d4, then I can meet that with g5. And that's what I was anticipating. So, you know, maybe I just need to lose another 10 games this way and I'll finally understand how that goes. Um, but yeah, when I'm playing, I don't know. When I'm playing in this 5-3 pool, these folks know their openings. They take time and actually learn from their mistakes. And that's something I need to do better, and I would spend a lot more time on that game if I were not so tremendously upset by just how that went. <laughs> how I've studied that particular opening repeatedly, and I still cannot remember it. So, that's just how it goes. Yep. Front page hype. Gotta enjoy the little things here. So I'll try to be more optimistic. Try to be a bit of a role model, even if I am consistently losing games. Like, when I'm playing 3-2, I'm finding myself regularly getting flustered with opponents um, for just allowing me to get away with a lot of things. And here, the pendulum has swung completely uh, the opposite direction, where I can't get away with anything in these openings. Or so it feels. Like, like here, I just blew a rook. Isn't it great? Although I think here I could do queen a4. And knight c6, knight takes, knight takes, knight takes, knight takes check. I don't know. But if I don't do that, then I'm losing a piece or more here. So what do I do? Because like knight takes e6, queen takes queen, king takes, I don't know where this goes next. They probably take, I, well, I looked at queen a4 and queen a4 seemed to lose a piece. In fact, queen a4, bishop d7, and I'm host, so we have to go for this. And if this loses, well, I'm just lost anyway. But I think after the queen trade, I think they take f2, I run away, and maybe I can salvage something. Although it's really not looking good. Um, but if I tried this the other way with queen a4 check, then this knight takes wins my queen, and yeah, I'm just falling uh, even worse there than I am here, or so I think. So I think this is okay. So yeah, the correct move here, I think, is knight takes f2. Um, oh wait, I'm up a bishop? Um, so maybe they do have to take on c3, but then I'm still, I'm confused. My knight is going to, yeah, my head is spinning trying to follow all this. Um, so I have two options, those being, well, I've got more than two. I could do king c2, I could do king e1, king e1 would trap the knight. And more importantly, if they take on e6, uh, I can take on f2. Um, so there is that possibility. Um, I think king e2, knight takes rook, knight c7, king d7, knight a8, knight c6. Yeah, that's no good. The ability to play this knight d5 doesn't really gain me anything. Um, 
so is king e1 stepping into the pin my best move? Really looks that way. But no, king e1 trapping the knight doesn't gain me anything, because my opponent's just going to play rook e8 to get... Well, then I do bishop e2. If I had to do king e2 first, then later I could file with bishop e3. So... I'm not sure I see the difference between the two king moves here. Let's do the one that doesn't pin my piece. Also, this rook e8... Oh, I'm sorry, I was envisioning the pawn on e6 with the rook on e8. That's not where the pawn ends up. Chess is hard. Now, I can't hear any of the pieces clicking. Can you hear them? Because I sure can't. Let me try going to the sound menu here. I still can't hear it. It's probably just my speaker gone awry here. Um, I guess I am up a bishop. Yep, yeah, indeed. Not sure where all the sound went. Let's try this again, turn the speaker on. If I go back a move. Okay, now I can hear the pieces. That should help in some small way. Although I didn't hear that one. So, yeah, probably my speaker's on the fritz here too. That's lovely. Um, it's okay. We'll survive somehow. Um, so I was worried about rook e8, thinking I could counter with bishop e3. Um, hang on. Hang on, this just got complicated. I don't want to let his knight out. And I'm debating, do I do knight d5? Or do I do bishop e3? How aggressively do I try to get my own knight? Well, I'm sorry, knight d5 doesn't actually threaten to win a piece at all. So let's just continue development. And while this knight is... Um, whatever the word for encased is... Uh, it's trapped. So, um, so yeah, the a8 knight is hanging, and I'm really not sure. Yeah, knight c7 is kind of clever. Um, bishop f4 check feels good. I'm not sure that it actually is good, however. I feel like this developing move is probably um, more to the point. Because now I've got this other check. Um, so my opponent has every incentive to take on g3. Although that would require admitting that their position is not as good as mine. And yeah, I think somehow I escaped this opening up a piece. So I really don't know what happened here. This is a huge reversal from... Um, games I had earlier today, where I just keep blundering in the opening and then trying repeatedly in the middle game and end game to salvage it, and just struggling the entire way through the game down a piece, because um, turns out in chess you can't just save any position. Only some positions are savable. Um, Alright, so I wanted to do something clever with the fork here, but there is nothing clever to be had. We'll just have to go here directly defending the bishop. And then I can step away. Or I can even step here. Hmm. So do I put the kings on the same file or do I run away? Leaving my bishop pinned. Um, probably doesn't matter. I think this... Um... I don't like either move, but I have to pick one. So let's pick this one. Alright, so wait, do I... Bishop f4 is not mate in one. Feels like mate in one. But it isn't. Um... I can take here, however. 
and then I can take here. And if they take this pawn, then I can take here. And if they take my knight, I can take their knight. So this is okay. Probably better was just this directly. Although king takes c4 and... Well, no. I'm hitting the rook. So I've got one minute left, but we have an increment, so I'm not going to lose. If I lose this... Well, let's not go there, because we're not going to lose this. At least not on the position. Perhaps I'll find a way to lose this on time, but certainly not on the position. So my idea is I want to try... Well, I'd like to play king e3 hitting the knight. I can't do that. Um, I'd like to play king c2, except that invites knight d4 check. But now, with the knight on e5, there is no knight d4 check. Um, right. So, I've got e2 covered. Uh, let me just... Whoops, that would be a mistake. Now, wouldn't it? Oh, dear. Chess is hard. Has everybody other than me ever said chess is hard? Because it just feels like I'm the only one spreading the truth here. So my king is going to duck and cover one of these two ways. Um, probably this is better. All right. I guess I'm going to go up this way after all. Um, actually, since I'm attacking, let's continue attacking. This is still indirectly defended by this fork. So my opponent's forced to move their king onto the long diagonal. Which is not exactly what they had in mind. Uh, I walked into a fork. Thankfully it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm stressed out. But that's okay. Uh, saying it doesn't matter is slightly oversimplifying the matter. It probably does matter because, like, the bishop is worth more than the knight here. Um, also, I'm really opening my opponent's possibilities by allowing this tactic in the first place. But I didn't think that they would exchange that directly while there were still other threats they could try to make. Um, so, yeah. We're going to try to push some of these pawns. Because if I can promote one of these, um, actually, let's put my king up here. All right, all right, that's uh, my opponent is attacking my pawn. I'm going to undermine this. I should have done that last turn, except I wasn't paying attention. Now I'm paying attention, but it's probably I should probably do something other than this, to be honest. Um, Although, you know, I can get lucky, so, yeah. Apparently mistakes even happen in time trouble there. Um, Alright, so against this, let's try playing the Slav. Assuming we get a Slav position. Alright, so we have the London. Uh, the opening that I ridicule repeatedly and yet really don't have an answer to. I should work on that. Now I have won some games in like the Lee Chess Ladder when that was a thing. I did win some games against this uh, pretty speedily, but that involved pretty heavy blunders from my opponents, um, and I shouldn't rely on that happening. So I'm not afraid of knight a4, because then I could do queen a5 check, and then if c3, the knight's just off sides. Here, I'm not so concerned about knight c7, because, well, I can defend against knight c7. So, I think I survived this, and then I could start worrying about how to try to get a better position as black against... Um, Perhaps moving a piece twice in the opening not being the most sound way to play the London. 
probably there are better ways to play the London. I've heard and read about and completely forgotten the several ways black has to equalize, so I'm forced to start from scratch here. This is definitely not how black is supposed to try to counter the London. Um, but here we are. Um, Queen b6 is my blitz nonsense that I've played against it, and really I need something better. Um, so. Oh, is a5 really a threat here? If so, I do need to counter said threat. Uh, I think it is a threat. Although, if he plays a5, I just have to play queen d8, or queen c6, but queen c6 runs into knight e5, which is really unpleasant. So, um, it's best I just resolve this tension straight away, which actually gives me a target on b5. But I don't think anything positive is going to come of having this target, because it's so easy to defend. I could be mistaken. Yeah, this is not how you equalize against the London. Um, I overrated my chances here. Probably should have... No, this queen a5 would not have improved anything. Um, because the rook is defended, so there's no pin there. Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay, I can castle here, right? Oh my goodness. How did I allow this to happen? Well, that's great. That happened. <laughs> oh, dearie. This is not good. I am flustered. So, the obvious threat is knight takes f7. The only way I can counter that is by advancing my king. So, forward it goes. Yeah, losing is probably generous. Um, black is probably worse than losing, because black has to suffer, and then lose. So, yeah, this is really not good at all. I should probably stun study more of what's going on here, and try to find something better. Uh, rather than constantly making up my own theory. And my whole point of my playing 5 plus 3 today was that if my opponents don't repeatedly mash the rematch button, maybe I'll have a minute to try to analyze um, what I'm doing wrong. I'm not sure black can actually resign here. Like, I can't play f6 because a knight takes g6. That's true. But... Oh, wait. Um, tactics. Wow, tactics. All right. Actually, f6 is my best move. Unless g5 is better. But, jeez. That's kind of bleak. <laughs> hmm. g5 takes f6. It's not so terrible. Um... Let's try it. It looks bleak, um, but it's important that I'm keeping defense of the g6 square, at least until there's a piece on g5 worth attacking. I've survived worse than this in Blitz, but 5 plus 3 is kind of slightly a different animal than your typical Blitz game. It doesn't quite fall in the rapid category, but, um, yeah, it's definitely blitz. It's just blitz with opponents who are paying attention. Um, so this forces you to think more. And, um, like, yes, if I'd played f6, or if I played knight f6, then I'm just dropping either an exchange or a piece uh, correspondingly. However, with this g5, I'm actually kind of, sort of, 
not dropping a piece immediately. And here, um, oh wait, so here my plan was to take there, then queen takes, and then take on um, g5. Uh, I think that still has to be the plan, unless I play king f7 here. King f7 runs into queen h4 seven check bishop g7 and then i get pinned so i have to take here so i'm still down an exchange um exchange and a pawn i do have some activity uh so i can't yet quite resign this although it is damn close oh it is close to being resignable and in a slower game, certainly black would not want to continue on here. But I will stumble and stutter, and even though this isn't my typical 3 plus 2 game, I will attempt to win it, because that's how I play. Um, I guess I never really covered what happened uh, throughout this, uh, this year slash season. I know my coverage of my own games and other people's games in the chess league has been, um, well, I haven't covered a game in about four or five months or something. It's been kind of weird like that. Um, so I'm debating bishop g7. I don't think bishop g7 gains me anything. It does, like, expose my rook, I lose the rook, but I don't get any counterattack that wins anything. So I'm guessing queen takes is probably happening. And then I could just develop a piece. So yeah, anyway, my coverage of those... You know what I said about opponents paying attention, right? Um, anyway, my coverage of the Chicago Chess League games uh, has um, not been happening for quite a while. I do need to go back and start covering those games uh, even though several of them were quite unpleasant. See, you you were telling me this was resignable, um, and I was saying, well, almost, and it's really close, and I really do believe that. Um, but, I mean, it's one thing to resign if you don't have a plan. Uh, it's another thing to resign if you do have a plan. So... To the extent you can have a plan, try to have one. And my plan was just to try to expose my opponent's king and get my pieces out. And note this rook on a1 is still not in its best position. I'm not taking my opponent for granted here either. Like if I were to do knight c2, they'd just defend the pawns, so I should do some other developing move. So this is a double attack. Um, I could have taken d4 directly, but my knight feels exposed here. And I'd much rather close the file before something bad happens. Um, yes. Have you ever seen a Mikhail Tall game? Because if... Everywhere I could find a book that features a Mikhail Tall game, I would read the game and the commentary and analyze every single sub variation and try to find resources that both players had missed um, and that is quite a challenging exercise for any game but especially for Mikhail um, it's really not clear what's going on in his games so and I do that for my own tournament games as well I think Kasparov used to do the same um, so I, that's an approach that allows you to learn from your mistakes and from the mistakes of uh, players whose games you read about. It does not allow you to learn openings, um, which is something I need to work on. <laughs> I very badly need to work on my opening repertoire. And I keep saying that and I'm always saying that and it, my opening repertoire is just always a mess. Um, so at some point, uh, and I'm getting better and better at it, and my tournament results are improving, 
but at the same time my opponents that I'm getting paired with are better so that doesn't really help my cause at all oh no I drop my knight whatever will I do okay let me guess rook takes all right uh, I appreciate uh, opponent who just cuts to the chase like that uh, so I actually don't see the mate here um, I thought I had a mate this is good enough so I've got this covered I've got this covered all right see that would be an appropriate resignation but then he mashes the rematch button and we don't have any time to look at it so on to the next game um, all right forget this trying to grab a pawn and win it thing i'm surprised he did knight takes knight takes just gives me a free tempo um i know some people are more greedy and try to gr i used to grab material and I don't know, as much as I could grab in the opening. Um, try to get as many tempi as possible and just be super greedy about it. But that tends to get me in trouble, too, when the tactics don't work out. So, like, here I'm seeing that I could potentially, if I play bishop e2, my bishop could be overloaded defending both of these pieces. So, hypothetically, if a bishop landed here and pinned my knight, that could be bad news. So I'm debating instead going bishop e um bishop d3 instead of bishop e2. Um I'm just debating do I want to play h3? I don't think so. I think I just want to get out of here. Oh, bishop d3 drops the well. Bishop d3, bishop g4. My head's spinning already. This is wonderful. Bishop d3, bishop g4, d5, and then he pushes one of his pawns and I take it. And I think that's the end of that. And he does double my pawns on uh, c3 and c4, but it costs him his bishop to do that. Am I accepting challenges? Um, I probably should, because that would actually make these games a lot easier. I don't know if uh, my user preference has have me open for a challenge, uh, but... It's probably something I should consider doing so I stop losing so many games. Uh, even though I think I've only lost one while on stream here. So, sure, I guess. Um, right now I'm trying to play games that are slower than 3-2 but are still blitz. Um, so we'll see how that goes. All right, so I am very confused by my opponent's willingness to trade pieces right there because, oh wait, I'm not up material. I felt like I had to be up material, but that's not what's going on here. Um, yeah, let's just castle before I lose my king and see if I can do something to enable uh, challenges. Um, so let's try to fix that. Meanwhile, I did, I wanted to play f4 last turn, and here I have all the more reason to play f4. I'm just debating, do I win a piece with c5 instead? Or do I just push f4 directly, trying to win a piece? Uh, it's just really a question of which way wins more. Because I'm... My opponent's not thinking here and just allowing me to do whatever I want. So, um, like I could even do bis like knight to b5 and just set off some really fun tactics here. But um, Yeah, like if I play c5, even if they take h2, I'm still winning a piece. So let's do that. I'm so confused. Why did my opponent allow that to happen? I'm trying to change my privacy settings, but my opponent keeps moving. So let's see. 
Where's the thing? Let players challenge you. How about if they're within 300 points of my rating? How about that? That seems fair. Um, all right, let's take the piece. Note, I did calculate this. So I am thinking, despite moving quickly. Um, that and this. I've tried attacks like this. They never work out, so... I don't think they're going to work for my opponent here. Um, hmm. <laughs> do I do this? Do I do F4 maybe? F4 looks right. F4 is dangerous. Hmm. Well, this whole position's dangerous. I have to do something to... Oh, I'm sorry. I have something here. There's a thing. Get this rook to move, and then we push f4. And this is just um, winning another piece. So, yeah, I was wondering, like, how come all my moves here are bad? Surely I have to have some candidate move that doesn't lose a piece here, or that doesn't expose my king for no reason. F4 just didn't feel right in that it, opening up my king's side while my king is still here is not the sort of thing I should do at all. Um... So it makes much more sense for me to get my bishop to a safer square with tempo, and then I can push this interference move. And note that queen h5 still uh, drops the queen. So yeah, I'm really not sure what my opponent's going to do. I would sack the exchange, um, although I really don't see anything positive coming from it. I don't know what else black can try here. just feels like without a knight, um, black's attack is just falling apart. Alright, so I could take the exchange, but I'm going to do this first. Because I really don't like this bishop. And then, so if the queen moves, yeah, I didn't think that would the queen would move. Um, so I have a choice between uh, winning a piece or winning an exchange. I choose to win a piece. Right. Um, let's see, do I go bishop forward or backward here? I don't know. How come bishops can't move sideways? Here, let's take the center. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Zug is excited today. That's good. Yeah, today we're on the road to a thousand. And that I am playing um, five plus three. And I never play five plus three. And like everything that I could ever get away with in all the other time controls just doesn't work here at all. Like, these guys actually pay attention, and my task is significantly complicated by having an opponent who tries. So, yep, we're, we're on the road. Just trucking along. If they play f5, I guess, I don't know, I go back and then back here and something like that. Yeah, I didn't think f5 would happen. It's too logical. So the queen's off sides, and this is attacked. Right. So we'll just threaten the f7 square. See if he notices. Let's 
see. Can I just... I mean, I've got to have so many good moves here. Um, hmm. Time pressure. Oh, time pressure. Whatever. I don't care. Just watch me not care. And he's cut off his bishop, and my bishop's escaped, and now I can consider opening things up. If he just lets me develop all of my pieces, and I hope he will. Um, he's rated like 1900 or something. 1800, 1850, something like that. He's given me quite a fight. So my 2000 rating doesn't really mean much here. Oh, actually, he's pinned his rook. That's great. <laughs> that lets me do this and then this with check. Uh, so he's looking for a move. E6 might be a move, believe it or not. Um, yeah, so. All right, fine. Also have this. So that's probably what I should be doing here. Um, sure. This can't be too bad. There's got to be some good moves here. This is a really well-placed queen. So this might be a point for my opponent to concede the game. Oh, I guessed correctly. Huzzah! <laughs> Colonel. Colonel is correct. Anyway, you see my name down here. Pronounce it how you will. You see it up there as well. But if you want to challenge me, uh, you know where to find me. Wait, are they... Like, the button's ghosted out, but flashing? What should I infer from this? That they sent me a rematch, but uh, they want to play a new game with me. But also, they're not here. Okay, I can accept that. Um, I'm kind of curious what happened. Not so much this game, but the previous games. Um, yeah, really not curious what happened this game, because they just let me go away with, run away with taking the center. Is my bishop d3 terrible? h3 is actually okay. Bishop e2 I've played before and had some really sad situations happen, but apparently it's fine. Um, oh. Oh. I still play h3. And because they haven't played knight c6 yet, there's this stuff. And if they invert the move order and play knight c6 first, then I could play h3 immediately, or I could just play d5. Oh. Well. That makes sense. Hmm. Okay. Well, I feel stupid. But that's okay. Um, yeah. So let's play some 5 3. <laughs> oh no. Um, I mean, if you really, really want, I guess I could open up to challenges that are more than 300 points away. I'm very confused why players that are that distant rating wise would be interested in the challenge but um yeah i could do it i could open up my filter even more it's just like i've played up um against opponents that are rated like 21 2200 and stuff um and that it's just it's a very stressful experience uh, it's certainly doable. It's just very stressful. Um, be glad to analyze people's games, too. Um, analysis, I think, is way more fun than actually playing, but that's just my perspective. Um, you all enjoy uh, watching these matches, of course. And I guess I'm learning something, so I have some games to analyze from. 
Although I should be in it, analyzing the games I played throughout the year. I'm still not up to it yet. Um, hmm. This is not a good square for this bishop. Oh, excuse me? Uh, there's a chess game going on here, sir. Um, that's exciting. That's the kind of move I would play. I approve, but simultaneously am in um, some kind of mental state looking at that. Not sure exactly how to describe it. So I can just take the pawn. Um, or I could trade... If I trade here, my g2 square gets weak, just like the other game I showed that this diagonal, I could take like b7 and a8. Well, you're kind of the same holds true the other way. Here, it's important that I develop my pieces. Um, am I dropping the d-pawn? Nope, d-pawn is not yet dropping. So let's just play here. All right, so my opponent insists that I spend a tempo, moving my bishop somewhere useful. So either I take here or I go back to e2. Retreating to e2 actually makes a lot of sense here, but I like tactical moves. I like taking stuff. Um, those are two completely different desires, but um, yeah, here I should just go back. This is fine. a6 doesn't really gain anything for my opponent other than removing the annoying threat on the knight. But I probably wasn't going to take the knight anyway. Um, and note that because this bishop can't really get to b4, I'm not really so worried about queen b4 and I defend and the b-file opening up. So yeah, they've successfully defended the g5 pawn. Um, and I'm debating how to spend my extra tempo. Um, it's not so clear. This looks like a reasonable developing move. And do I castle into it? Or do I castle queenside? I really enjoy the adventure and the thrill from castling into it, but I don't have an attack going on the queen side. So my opponent who spent 30 seconds this entire game, um, plus the increment, is doing quite well here, I think. I'd love to volley insults, except here they're actually just doing great, so the insults would not be very well placed in this position. I should just cast a lot of this and see what I can do next here. Um, I'd like to be able to do this. It's dangerous. Let's get my king over here first so I'm not dropping my a pawn and then we'll see where I can go next. Well... I could take on d5 and then push c4, which would force an exchange on f3, and then I'm dropping my d-pawn. That's possibly not my best course of action. Um, what else could I try? Well, really, anything else would be better. I could do knight e4. Um, get knight e4 and then knight c5. And if I go c3 here, what happens? I know my opponent is optimistic, but I don't think their optimism is warranted here. They are up on the clock. I'll give them that, but really looks like I've actually bolstered my center and I'm about to go knight c5. Um... So whatever advantage they got from successfully getting away with g5, uh, I think that advantage has precipitated. And we're back to equality. 
So I'll just continue with this development. Um, let's develop this only for lack of an idea. Putting a rook on a half open file is an idea, so we'll just do that. So now they're intending f4. Um, how do I counter? Uh, so I guess, I guess this is okay. It's not what I dreamed of, but it's playable. Okay, that's just ridiculous. There are people playing chess here, sir. <laughs> um, can I take this? Ah, oh, my head. I don't know what to make of this. I'm not winning the queen, so I should run away here first. But also, I think now I take here. And I guess we have to exchange twice here. This seems okay. Oh. This seems less okay. This does not seem as okay as it seemed a moment ago. Um, well, really not a whole lot I can do here, is there? Just in case. Just in case I can catch my opponent doing something illicit here. Let's play it out. <laughs> like I was saying, um, there's the possibility that my opponent might not be doing something they should be doing, or vice versa. Um, so let's play this out just to see if they can win this on their own. It could be that I'm just entirely imagining things, but it feels like my opponent's playing very strongly. Um, yeah, I can concede that. Very well played, internet chess killer. Let's just take a look and see if this person played a perfect game. And I know they're a new player on the site, and that's very exciting. Um, I'm just curious, do we have a grandmaster on our hands here? I would like to know. We'll resolve this afterward, but... Uh, I am kind of amused by that last move, by the way. Um, the This notion that he just plays uh, bishop a6, like, I would never have found that. And why this works is if I do queen here, then he checks and takes my queen. Like, there's so many other good things black can do in this position. I was expecting bishop c6, and I go back and then we liquidate here and my king si or queen side falls apart but um, yeah internet chess killer definitely on top of this so that was pretty cool um, they played one inaccuracy this game they played queen to b6 instead of queen to a5 um, but yeah so that was special um, so what did I mess up this opening? Ignoring my opponent's perfect play. Let's see, what could I have done better? Oh, normally I do play d4. Uh, did I end up playing d4 quickly? No, I played h3. I was afraid of bishop g4. Okay, yeah, I was playing very provocatively here. Um, and I got what I deserved for it. That's pretty funny. <laughs> if I were playing against a master... They would have punished me the same way. 
So I can't be too suspicious. I did play pretty stupidly this game. Um, so let's play a tournament. Let's do something to burn off the edge. Um, I prefer playing with an increment. So is there a tournament down here that has an increment? Because that would be great. Here's one. Yeah, let's play with these guys. They know what's up. D takes e5, followed by knight d7. Was good for white. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, I did. Yeah. I'm not even sure which game you're referring to, because I, I should have been following the chat here much closer. That's my fault, but... Um, either way, that was an exciting game there. Um, yeah, I've kind of sworn that I've seen some other players with similar names to that floating around. Uh, it's a pity here that here we only have 10 players, and I guess I must have late joined. Oh, here we go. So yeah, I can drag this to resize the board, but here's this is as big as it gets. Um, the other thing I should be doing is, I know I usually play with the 3D set. I should go back to using the 3D set. Um, so, um, at least I think I've gotten to the point where I'm seeing tactics better on it than I am with the 2D set, which is crazy. Because, like, I don't know, previously I had such good ability to spot tactics on a 2D board. And then I pulled out the 3D set because I got tired of the 2D board. Um, honestly, this is really not the most beautiful 2D board ever, but it functions. It's very functional. Uh, I'm trying to remember, like, back in the US Chess Live days, where you could download the client to your PC and fully customize uh, a lot of things. I had some really outrageous dark blue or navy and cyan boards that I liked, but probably everybody else would throw up if they saw it. But it was a work of art. Um, and somehow it felt calm. Just looking at this brilliant blue board. Um, so do I want to play here? Do I want to take? I don't like the idea of doubling my pawns. But also my knight feels like it doesn't have an outpost up here. Also, I'm dropping a pawn. Good gravy. Yeah, let's not drop pawns and just see um, if I can play some good moves. And if I can play some good moves and not hang all my pieces, that's probably going to serve my cause the best. Um, I'd love to put my bishop on this long diagonal, but I'm probably going to find a way to drop the e6 pawn if I do that. I'm suddenly becoming very nervous about dropping stuff, because I didn't even see e6 hanging in the first place. And maybe I need to go back and play stuff, uh, play other openings, really. Okay, well, that's exciting. Um, Alright, fine. You want to fight? We'll fight. <laughs> Oh no, I have an isolated e-pawn that's super relevant in this ultra-tactical position where we've got all these open lines everywhere. Yeah, I'm totally going to care a lot about that pawn and its pawn structure and all that jazz. Alright, so let's just get out of dodge and hopefully the knight doesn't land here because I guess it could. One, two, three. I guess it does have a route to get there. I was going to say I couldn't find any way for it to get there, but I just found one, so that's a bit unnerving. Um, yeah, let's just take this diagonal. There's a lot of squares here. I got these two covered. Let's develop all the pieces and checkmate them. How hard could it be? If they sack on h6, by the way, then I just have knight h7, and even if they take this pawn, I'm still fine. Um, yeah. 
So the question is, how long can I go ignoring the fact that I have this isolated pawn? The answer is probably quite a long time. There's a lot I can do to try to complicate this. If this knight ever moves, there's even more things I can do. In the meantime, well, there it goes. There's the knight. So now I can fight back and try to hit this square and maybe I have this covered, maybe even, I don't know. But I want to bring this other rook over. Also C2's hanging. Um, wow, really? You made a big deal about giving me an isolated pawn and then you're going to allow me to return the favor. What's this about, sir? If knight d4, I just take here. And I'm defending this, and this doesn't really do anything. Um, so do I have rook f2 here? Rook f2 looks scary. And I don't know, if they plunk the knight down here, then I just go along the second rank and see if I can bring the other rook in. So, um, I guess this is an example of how not to attack. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's bring the queen into the... Oh. Oh, was that his first game on Lee Chess? I feel bad now. I shouldn't tease him. But 3-2 seems to give you this balance where it's not opening theory heavy. It's not... I don't know. It allows you to spot a lot of tactics and turn the game around, um, but not necessarily requiring a lot of opening knowledge, because you can recover from a lot of positions through um, opponents missing a lot of things. Uh, so, I'm concerned about a knight e5 impending I want to try to get the better position here, but also that's very hard to do against a Queen's Indian. Um, wait. Um, let's equalize, because I'm nervous. Let's just trade down into an endgame and then try to win the endgame. So I'm sure this is exactly what they had in mind by playing this opening. Not really, but um, so I've got a slight uh, positional, well, there's an imbalance here. I, I want to say it favors me, but it doesn't. But if I can like protect against c4 and e4 landing on the board, if I can get away with stopping both of those, then I'm better. If I cannot, then I have some challenges to work against here. Um, I'm concerned if I take here, there's rook d1. Uh, but here my opponent's kind of forced my hand. I have to block the diagonal this way. Uh, otherwise, if I castle, then they take on d5, and I have the worst end game, and I'd rather not defend that. Oh, it's not your first game. All right, good game. Well played. Um, at least now I'll be able to sleep at night. Starting to feel bad about that. It was a good game, but just the way in which it resolved seemed um, not quite fitting for like how it started. He had a good start. Alright, do I do the super ballsy thing in castle queenside? For no reason. Actually, there is a reason. The reason would be that I could start mobilizing this kingside pawn attack. Let's do it. This is sketchy. Like, this bishop covers everything. So, I'm already in trouble. But... Um, 
That doesn't stop me. No, sir. If I stopped because of common sense, then would we be here today? Probably not. <laughs> so, yeah, no, there's stuff I can do to make this position more interesting. And this I also anticipated, and the best I could come up with, and the best I'm still coming up with here is f6. Acknowledging that my kingside pawn attack is going to be very, very slow. Yeah. This is going to take a while uh, to move up the board. So, um, yeah, feel free to, like, I don't know, prepare some popcorn or something, because this might take a while. All right. I didn't really know what to do about this either. Um, I don't know, do I play like... Uh, I guess maybe this. Maybe rook h7. Who can say? So I want to play f5 and really try to keep this moving. And my opponent hasn't moved any of their pawns yet, and they could play rook takes d5 to try to break up my rook duo and everything I got going here. And they probably will, honestly. This sacrifice is probably reasonable, just breaking up my initiative that I've built up. Um, and assuming they don't feel like sacrificing a whole lot of material, they'll take the rook. They'll take the exchange back. And now I'm just better developed. Um, so my plan, g4, h4, e4, get the pawns off the dark squares. And try to confine the opponent's king. Also, rook d2 somewhere in this agenda. Um, rook d2 is not happening, is it? Alright, how do we adapt? I'd like to stop g3. To stop g3... I have to play h4, and now we'll play this, and I think I've got the better side of this endgame. Whoa, really? Are you serious? You're just going to give me that. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, that's very surprising. Um, I can get away with this. If takes takes, if king f3, um, e4, and the king has to retreat back to e2. So, yeah, g3 is forced. And now we just go take the pawn. Um... Now that's silly. You don't want to take there. You really don't want to take there. Do I have the tactic here? Does the tactic work? It looks pretty damn good. And if I don't do this, they can play e4 anyway, so let's do it. It's like the one tactic you find in every Bishop Endgame book. Beware of the one tactic. Uh, my opponent did not beware. And I'm in time pressure, so I went for it. Um, rook c5 was surprising because uh, rook endgames are notoriously drawish. Uh, bishop endgames, not so much. Um, my opponent might be able to draw this. Um, it's not going to be easy for them. They... M had much better chances drawing the rook endgame. Alright, so we're going to keep my bishop on the opposite side of the board, like on my opponent's side of the board, um, and try to move my king toward the center, and try to get a passed a pawn or b pawn. Let's see. 
How's this going to work? I guess I have to play this. Now, it could be that I have nothing here. Um, but it could be that I have something. That's why we have to play out the games. Um, this is not as trivial to draw as some people might think. Alright, fine, he's got it. Because um, I can't secure this square. If I could secure this square, this would be a completely different endgame, but here I have no choice. I just have to go directly into that. Notice this gets immediately drawn once neither player can win. Um, but yeah, I could not secure the b4 square. Perhaps I had some other way to play that that could have won the A pawn and the game. Perhaps I could have sacrificed my bishop for the A pawn and maybe converted that somehow. Um, but no, once his bishop's on the long diagonal and his king covering the b4 square, there that is not winnable. Um, I'm sorry, no, I could have moved my bishop back to a3, got their bishop back to c1. If they're a bishop on c1, then I could have interposed my bishop back on b2, but then they have king takes a4. So I still don't think I had it there. I could be mistaken. Um, so. Yeah, let's play the c3 French Sicilian queen e2 thing. That's a thing, right? Maybe? I don't know, you tell me. Is this a thing? Um, let's develop a piece. That's something I keep forgetting to do, right? If I just develop all the pieces and start shifting them in the direction of my opponent's king, then, then some positive things can happen. Um, like here, this seems like a good square for the knight, right? This seems like an even better square. Oh my goodness. Um, okay. Maybe I've missed something. It's not looking like that, but maybe? Anyway. Yeah, that's a cool outpost. Um, bishop d2, queen c1, queen d1. It's not mate in one. Did spook me for a second there. Um, did I do just knight d2 anyway? I don't know. Queen c1 and then he takes on b2. Yeah, let's just develop this way. Let's not hang things. I'm so good. <laughs> Alright, so... I can just try to trade some pieces and get this bishop to a better square, I guess. Uh, he had bishop takes f2 to win the pawn back. Gotta say, I didn't see that. Um, Alright, seems like a good move. Hmm. I think I've played a couple of good moves this game. Now, nah, sandbagging's when you lose on purpose. We're not losing on purpose. I'm certainly making an effort here. It's just not particularly... I'm not playing that well. So I think here this is a good developing move. Yeah. And then if he blocks the knight... Um, this is kind of cool. And if king e8, then I mate with the knight, like on g7. 
There we go. I found a good move. Nice. But yeah, I started the stream playing some 5 plus 3. Um, those games were really challenging. Uh, one of my opponents played basically a perfect game, which I'm quite amused by, but also at the time it was exhausting. <laughs> oh, how did I get this? Uh, I spent forever writing some CSS that just um, that just plugs into Lee Chess, a cascading style sheet that takes the default styles that Lee Chess offers and says, you know what, let's change this color over here, let's change this font over there, let's add some text border shadows and um, or text shadows and let's just try to make this in a way that uh, looks like something out of Tron. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty suspicious game. And again, it's possible, like there are many 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 people around the world who do play at the level of a chess master and perhaps the guy who picks the name uh like he picked there just might be a master that's entirely possible i could have just been out of okay this is taking forever to pair me i was about to quit but um so i could have got paired up it's just unfortunate that like oh oh what uh, um, well, that's an interesting way to meet the King's Gambit. Um, gotta say I was not prepared for that one. Uh, so Knight C3 transposes to the Vienna? I could just take here, though. I could swear that like this is in Grandmaster Evans book called What's the Best Move. Um I think he covers this line. And yeah, it's playable, but good gravy, why would you do this? Actually, no, this uh, I've played this before. It's been like 15 years, but I played the same exact thing. I'm not impressed. Although I was, that was colors reversed. Uh, so I was actually up a tempo. My opponent played the Latvian against me. But I've played it the same way, plugging the knight in front of the pawn and taking the center like this. So I should be careful about um, casting stones when I'm in a glass house or something like that. Because, like, I play this way. So I shouldn't criticize opponents for playing the same things that I would play. But not playing it as well. No. <laughs> that just doesn't make any sense. Um, should I do it? Oh, man, that looks fun. We're doing it. No, that drops a piece. <sighs> Damn it. Let's castle. Or let's get the king out of here, and then we can consider doing the thing that isn't there anymore. I cry. My opponent denied me the super cool sacrifice, so I just have to develop my pieces and win like a normal chess player. That's sad. Yeah, my opponent's playing instantaneously. He just... It's pretty clear that the clock is kind of a target for him here. Although he's probably completely forgotten that we have a two second increment. And with the two second increment, I don't care if you're up two minutes. I can play moves in two seconds per move uh, if I'm in a better position. That's not that hard. Uh, if I'm in a worse position, it's a lot harder. But if I'm in a worse position, then I can't really criticize your time consumption because it just means I'm playing really badly. Or you're playing really well and you just didn't need the time. You'll see a lot of people cry injustice in the forums um, under circumstances where, well, if you just gave me like a second or two every move, then I could have saved this position. My opponent doesn't deserve a win. 
it's so horribly unjust and like these people have never watched game of thrones i'm guessing they don't know like how the real world or how the fantasy worlds operate um and i'm like dude if you want to play with extra time just there's a setting for that can you just like use the setting and not try to have me change the world for you because that'd be great um anyway oh man tactics abound tactics everywhere here oh my goodness uh, let's do this this looks fun so i got this i got that i've got this it's like you could not every, here a tactic there a tactic everywhere a tactic um let's just not hang the rook to a one move tactic because that kind of uh, ruins my steals my thunder um yeah a good part of the game of thrones series are pretty good i never got through all of them um nor do i think i will but man they had some really solid episodes um and there's a lot of fans who are not exactly thrilled with the way that the more recent episodes went and i guess that's about all i can spoil <laughs> oh my goodness yeah opinions differ wildly on the subject um Sorry, I have to actually think about these moves here now. I think I'm dead. Because the only thing defending this is the bishop. Alright, I might be alive again. Yes, I need to defend this, which invites that, which invites that which invites this. Oh, he wimped out. I'm not sure I can do a lot about that. Fine, whatever. Just do anything to keep the clock moving. Still can't believe he wimped out on this. It's still there, although it's not as convincing here. should have done that a little while ago oh this is no good i'm still pinned oh but i get a tempo i get a very valuable tempo by hitting the rook all right fine oh i blundered again this is great this is exciting all right whatever we'll just go for it i'm down a full rook and 40 seconds and losing all my stuff but otherwise, it's fine. <laughs> Stop king f7. All right. Just have to take all the pawns before he can do take any of mine. What are the odds? Of this? Well, that doesn't work. Oh, a 2400. All right, I don't need to feel so bad about that. Let's pause this, because we have a challenge. So I don't have to play against 2400s anymore. <laughs> Oops, let's take the challenge. If I can find, here's the button. Yeah. All right. 
good luck. Um, I know you just watched me play some E4 games, but actually D4 is what I've been trying to play lately. Um, let's do this, I guess. I'm confused. I'm so confused. What am I supposed to do? This looks like a good square. What? Um. Okay. Sure. You've got me nervous, honestly. I don't know how you managed it. But let's just castle. Let's pretend this is a normal opening. Actually, just before the stream, I had watched this beautiful scene from the Game of Thrones. Um, and again, I can't describe anything that happened in it to you, so that kind of ruins the story, but still. It was beautiful, is the point. So you just have to trust me on that. Wait, can I activate my rook? Because I would like to have a rook on an open file. Yeah. I can has open file. <laughs> I'm so confused. Why is my opponent so obliging? I don't get it. It'd be one thing if I just missed a tactic, but um, I could not have possibly missed 35 tactics here. They might do knight g4 and try to double my pawns, and I'm okay with that. Right. So, I'm going to liquidate here, which is kind of ill-advised, but um, <laughs> I think this still continues to my development, and that way I'm holding this and I'm going to try to win that pawn. And knight d4, this knight getting to that square, is a long distance away. So that's why I'm attacking with haste here. Do I want to exchange queens? Uh, queens are fun pieces, but this position... I'm an idiot. This position's more fun without the queens, except... Um, I'm blundering a piece, because I'm an idiot. So that's great. <laughs> oh, wow, cool. We've got a 2400 here in our audience. Yeah, good game. That made my head hurt. And consequently, I am blowing this game. But um, now that was a good game. <laughs> uh, let's pretend everything's okay here. Can all of my pieces hit this bishop once it blocks on d8? Um, yeah, I think this might this might not be completely terrible, because actually I have rook a8 check. And with rook a8 check, then I can move my other rook to d1. And there's no inner position to save the bishop. So despite all my complaining, I'm actually okay here. I don't know if I'm better. Um, I have to take that back. I expected king e7 to try to hold that. I don't think this holds. 
Um, and the only move to try to not drop the rook loses the knight. So, hmm. Sorry about all my complaining tonight. I wasn't doing it on purpose. All right, rematch offer sent. Sure, let's play a rematch. D3, all right. I don't want to play well. Okay. I was going to say let's not play a mainline opening, and it looks like that won't be a concern today. Um, even playing a sideline seems not to be a concern today. All right. Wait, what? Huh? There's a game going on here. Um, I know they tell you look for all captures and checks, but they don't tell you look for like discover, double attack, fork things. Because um, if they were to tell you that, nobody would take them seriously. Uh, but really, it's the double discovered attack fork things that can change, turn the game around unexpectedly. Alright, whatever. You get your exchange back. I'll pretend I saw all that. Um, and that that was all forced somehow, maybe. Not really, but you can pretend. Put on our magic hats and just ignore some of the finer details of what just took place there. Because I can't calculate right now. I just want to play some moves. Or rather, if there were a way that I could win that by force, I'd rather not find it. Because that's just not entertaining, having me sit there and think for several minutes. Um, so... Or maybe I have to take a different mindset. Maybe I should play more competitively. And be of the opinion that it's okay for me to take time and find good moves. Um, in general, I've been quite dismissive of that. And I guess, consequently, my tournament play has suffered because I've taken the same tact um, with tournament play. And that, like, Oh, I'll just play what I want to play. You know, it'll work out. And I can't do that. I should actually try to, like, play better moves uh, throughout the game. And that way I'm not suffering um, when I meet an opponent who actually does try to win. I know there are many opponents on this server who will, like, they'll play their favorite opening, and if it doesn't go well, that's okay. And then there's other players who will... Um, try much harder to win in all phases, including the opening. Um, mm -hmm. So, I'm afraid of knight g5, I'm afraid of bishop c4. Let's get my rook out of this fork thing. Of course there's queen b3, but um, there's only so much I can do to counter all of the threats, so this seems like a good way to get my rook out of this fork. Um, I could move the king, but I think that just exposes me to later peril. Um, and I don't think my rook is poorly placed on c2. Um, I thought I had a follow-up. That's kind of embarrassing. Because, like, if that's my big follow-up, then this is not going well. If I had a tempo... Oh, if I had a tempo, things could be different here. I guess this is a threat. But this is also a threat. Yeah. And you see a lot of, I mean, I've played some pretty sketchy openings, but I do it in 3-2, so, like, if I get completely busted out of the opening, of course I'll concede it. Um, 
once all my attacking pieces are removed. Um, which generally goes very quickly. It's like a root canal. Uh, just a little bit more pleasant. Um, but... Well, so that's a really defensive passive move here. Um, I don't have a way to counter it. I guess I have to do what I put the arrows on the board to do. Even though I don't think it's that great. Um, my concern here is this. Although that opens up a whole new world. But if he plays this first, then what? I don't know. Do I throw this in? What's going on? He castles. Of course he castles. I've scared him. Guys, we've hit the high morale point where um, I'm able to bully my opponent around. <laughs> um, and while that can be a bit of a high, it does come crashing down pretty quickly once he plays the right moves. Okay. So that's a past pawn. We can't let that sit there for too long. Um, he correctly notes that I don't actually have a threat here. Although I did have a threat with bishop c2 and I completely whiffed on it. So that's pretty disappointing. That I lost my only threat in the position because I wasn't paying attention. Um, I should see if I can do better than that. So here I have a threat. Um, and then follow that up with this, and then I can take on f1 again. And... Um, wait. Oh my goodness, what's going on here? That's confusing. Oh, but this doesn't mate. This just wins a pawn. Whatever. We've collected a pawn. We'll pretend that was the plan all along. Because that's uh, how it resulted. So this isn't so bad. I'd hoped for more. Really, I had. But this is not bad. Um... I should have done... no. Dropping a piece is not what I should have done. Um, Alright, we got tactics everywhere. Watch me blow everything to a single spectacular tactic somehow. Well, this will be fun. This will be super fun to try to maneuver forward without dropping stuff. Um, okay, this exposes... Oh, and I can play f4. They didn't. Well, I lucked out because... Um, I put pressure on my opponent's clock, and they moved a bit too rashly. Um, I should have pushed these one at a time. That was stupid. Um, buddy, you need to stay close to the center pawn, because you're going to need the tempo to trap my king. Yeah. They're yeah, good game, well played. Um Yeah, so like here 
Um, generally, you want to stay close to this, and in the hopes that once I take here, you can counter with king f4. I didn't actually count it out here, and I should have, but... Um, yeah, okay, I'm sorry, you're still a move too slow here, but um, it's slightly closer. It's a half move closer, but it's still not enough. Actually, it's not a half move closer, is it? I don't know, I can't count right now, but... Um, yeah, so... About this... Um, so I'm up a pawn... <laughs> so, uh, there's some theory on these endgames. Like, if it's just king and h pawn and knight versus king and knight, that's a draw. If it's two versus one, there's more winning chances. If it's three versus two, there's more winning chances. And if it's four versus three, good luck holding it. Um, so, white's big idea here is to push forward and exchange all the pawns. And Black's idea is to, um, well, to get a passed pawn, make enough threats, and be able to have the king run over and munch all the other pawns and promote something. Uh, this, is, if I had to guess, Black is better here, but winning is a very difficult thing to do. I'm sorry, there's one other thing White can try, and that's if you can force Black's pawns to move forward. You can still exchange the pawns. Um, but generally, you want to take some space and try to hold and exchange things. It's really not easy. Um, so, um, there's a saying in this that um, when you're ahead, exchange pieces. When you're behind, exchange pawns. And the reason for that is that uh, pawns can promote. So if all the pawns get exchanged off and I'm just up a minor piece, that's a draw. Um, but uh, if I'm able to promote one of my pawns because we trade off all the pieces or because, I don't know, I'm able to make threats with the remaining pieces and force them to get traded off and then I can win the pawn endgame, that's something different. So yeah, uh, that's just... The rule of thumb here that makes the endgames much easier to survive if you're defending them and easier to win if you're trying to win them you want to exchange pieces here i was delighted to see the bishop trade even though i had to give away and i didn't have to give away the b pawn it's just in the time pressure i saw that i had this and i was content trying to play it out um probably there was some continuation here that didn't exchange the b pawns because again i don't want to trade pawns i'd rather trade pieces so like i could consider knight d5 or knight a4 it's just my brain was starting to melt here already and i was in time pressure and i didn't want to worry about my opponent having the chance to promote a pawn as well because that complicates things so um so I saw this, and I was content to play into it, um, and it just happened that I quickly found a tactic that just happened to work out. So I got lucky, and this can happen. Um, when you read all your endgame books, you have a pretty good idea, like, this pawn endgame is winning. Um, but okay, our table base back here does not include these positions. Um, so... Um, yeah, it's a bit too late or in the wrong position that you stumbled upon the h4 idea. h4 is a good idea here, it's just tactically unsound. Um, so, like, if you'd played king e3 and then intended to follow with h4... Oh, goodness, my mind was racing a mile a minute here, but my big idea was I wanted to try to push my d-pawn... Um, without allowing any tricky knight forks or anything, and that's a very difficult thing. But assuming I could get my d-pawn running fast enough to force a knight trade to allow me to do king takes f3, that might have worked out for me. But h4 is a very good idea here. I don't know, maybe I'd have to play uh, g5 here to stop h4. 
And so now I control both of these squares. And so now it falls to your knight to somehow penetrate through this position. I guess through f1 to g3 to somewhere, but I have the square covered. So this gets very complicated. And I don't think g5 is right because black wants to trade pieces, not pawns. But I don't know what black should do here. It's not easy. So h4 is the right idea, but like doing that with the bishops still on the board would make this even harder for me to try to win it. Um, <laughs> it'll be in the daily tactics about 32 months from now. Actually, things don't end up in the tactics unless somebody hits the button, I think. You have to have Stockfish look at it. Um, so how did this start? I forget. Oh, this. Yeah, I'm not going to delve through this if that's okay. Um, I was happy with that. Pretty sure I was much better here already. Okay, I exaggerate, but minus 0.5 is not too bad. Um, excuse me? What? Bishop b2. Knight takes queen c2. Uh-huh. Yeah, we would have found that. Totally. We both of us saw that one. But, um... See, so yeah, I took on a1, queen takes, I just played d6. Did I have anything better than d6? <laughs> I could have done the really super ballsy pawn takes pawn, which I thought invited knight g5, um, or even bishop f, I'm sorry, bishop h6 first. Rook f6. Oh, how could I miss rook f6? Like, it's a very difficult move to find. Um... Yeah, and sure, white has some attacking ideas here, but um, like if you retreat the knight, then black gets Tempe to actually activate his army. Although I'm not sure how, because this weakens the pawn structure and allows trickiness, but um, yeah, if knight g5, which doesn't allow black to easily advance, black still advances anyway, and... I don't know. This is confusing. But presumably there's something there. Uh, but yeah, the rook f6. Completely missed it somehow. Don't know how. Like, this is so precarious. This is so awkward. This being on the long diagonal. Yeah. It's not my first choice, but I guess the pawn does defend it. So as long as I don't lose the pawn, maybe I'm okay. But if that pawn drops, like, this is super fragile. Um, anyway. Yeah, so, I think we had some good games today. Um, so, I think uh, we're going to wrap it up there. So, thanks everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time.